Hi everybody, welcome to Lawless TV and she is a spiritual empowerment coach and the founder of Raw Coaching. Welcome to the show, Kim Constant. How are you? I am great, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's such an honor that you're here. So tell me, what does a spiritual empowerment coach do? A spiritual empowerment coach, so I was obviously thinking about this phrase, what I'm helping people to do essentially is to connect with their divine self. We have a higher self that, that gives us all the information that we need. We have a soul that gives us the recipe for creating an amazing life. So I'm helping people essentially align more to who they are, uh, give them the, the best possible value uh, to the world that they can and create the best life that they could ever, ever possibly imagine, really. And how do you do that? Are you, are you, I know you're, you're, you're in the Netherlands, right? I hear yeah. that no, right, you live in Ireland, right? But now you're, right. you're visiting your grandma right, for your 90th birthday, was that it? No? Correct, correct. Oh, yep, good. we celebrated oh, yesterday. Yeah. Awesome. So, so how was that, by the way, before we get there? How was the birthday? Yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, actually very, very special. She was just in hospital the day before. So that was, well, obviously quite a fright for, for myself and my mom and my, my sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a lovely party. We had, you know, all of her relatives over uh, and enjoyed some beautiful food, some, some sunshine. We were sitting outside. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was very, very special to have her here and to have that, you know, this, a strong bloodline. <laughs> and I, I always want to hear those stories because I never had like a close family. So I'm, I'm always mm -hmm. like, it's always my immediate attention, right? But it is part of your spirituality right to connect absolutely with your, with your with your parents your grandparents your ancestors and so tell me how does that how does that how do you connect with with the uh, newer ancestors and your your family to get self-empowered how do i connect with my family um yeah i think it's of, of most recent years my mom has always been very spiritual we grew up so i have my, my two sisters my mom she was always into you know consciousness and she was feeding us information from when we were very very young and um, but at the time it was like oh yeah mom whatever They're like okay then she's coming with some more spiritual stuff yeah whatever woo woo kind of crazy and only the last couple of years i actually started tapping into that myself through a, a series of things that happened in my life. Um, so our relationship has really become much stronger than it was before, or maybe that's not the right word to, to, to call it. It's become more intensified. It wasn't a bad relationship before. It's just, it's become, uh, it's gone to a new level, I suppose, where we're sharing so much deeper information and, and I'm listening as well to, you know, what my family members have done there. They're actually entrepreneurs as well, which I never really, you know, looked at before. I'm like, oh yeah, now it all makes sense. They all had shops and businesses of all kinds of, yeah, all different types like oh yes yeah, so i am actually following in the footsteps even though often yeah. you think oh spiritual you know what are people going to think it's all woo woo as i was saying before and but yeah. it actually but it's, it actually makes so much sense because whatever type of business you have your 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 aim is to support people add that value and yeah automatically if it comes from from a, a good space in your heart you get that value back of course in some shape or form as well right and you are you currently you're still in a corporate career right correct and you uh, uh so are you when did you come to the realization wait, wait a minute like everybody mm -hmm. in my family is an entrepreneur right so and you're still in, you're still happy where you are right so but, but absolutely yeah I'm, I'm i'm so grateful where i am today so yes, I work for LinkedIn. I work uh, with marketing. So I support businesses in the Netherlands here, specifically where I am today uh, with our marketing strategies. So adding value to, to them and how they can you know, spread their, their value more. That's what I'm doing um, yeah, from a digital perspective. So that's been amazing. I mean, it's a wonderful company and I've, I've gotten so many opportunities and still do today. And then uh, it was probably about two and a half years ago, my, my dad suddenly passed away. And that was a very tough moment for me because, um, God, yeah, I'm like, oh, I can cry now. <laughs> because my, my parents got divorced when I was 11. So the contact with my dad has been, well, minimal to literally like not even a handful of times. The last time I saw him is when I was 23. And so I literally got a text some morning. My mom was in Australia. So with time zones and everything, I got a text, woke up at like seven in the morning. Oh, by the way, your dad has passed away. Mm -hmm. Might not have been the exact, you know, the exact text wow. and message, but that was kind of the gist of it. And it was really difficult for me because I didn't even know 
what I was allowed to feel, if you know what I mean, because, oh, I haven't seen this man in 10, 12 years. He is my dad biologically, but our relationship was, yeah, well, wasn't really quite there after, after they, they divorced. So it was, it was a very tough period for me. And within a week uh, of his passing or within a week of, of me finding out really, cause he had passed away uh, two weeks before that it was actually quite, well, I will share it because it was quite, quite terrible the way he passed away. He was actually found dead in his apartment. So Jesus. Um, yeah, kind of. It really, it was really tough because it just shows how you, how deep you can, you can, you can go as a person or how terrible things can, can end up if you don't, you know, have those relationships with people. If you, if you push everybody away, he died of a, of a terrible, terrible disease. And he, he was very assisted in wanting to heal himself. And so he, literally pushed everybody away and was found well his body was found by the, by the police his door was open for for a couple of days and the and the neighbors called the police and that's when they went in and they found him so yeah it was very very tough because it really made me think wow you know how how low can we go are the words that kind of come up for me you know so how terrible that my own biological well my own father ended up this way so in saying that, it actually gave me a lot of, well, beside it being emotional and me having all these thoughts of, can I even grieve? You know, what are people going to think? Oh, you haven't seen your dad in 10 years. Can I even stay at home for two weeks and, you know, cry and, 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 and go through all these emotions that I have? What, that what, 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 what went on your head? Because I know, I know that, that like when, when my biological father, who I, I think I met only once in my life, like when I was four, mm. so I don't even have an active memory of that. Uh, but when I learned of his death, I'm like, you know what? Um, now it's like I never have the chance again to 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 ask the questions that I wanted to ask, right? And and uh, uh, so so and, I, and I, even though I've never had any kind of relationship, I, I felt that sense of loss still. So how was that for yeah. you? Pretty much the same thing came up in my head where I. I had been in this phase for about six months or so where I was having this internal discussion of, okay, he's in hospital. Shall I go visit him? And then I, you know, I asked my auntie, I asked other people, should I go? Is it going to be a benefit for me? Yes or no. And you kind of like a back and forth, kind of like a, like a mental ping pong somehow. And I ended up not going. And when he did pass away, wow, I felt this huge sensation of guilt of like, God damn it, I could have actually gone and I could have actually had this conversation with him, not knowing what the outcome would be or if it would even add anything to him mentally. You know, he had been affected already as well. Um, so the guilt was one part of it of like, okay, I didn't take this step and now I, I really do regret it. And secondly, kind of like this feeling of, how can I describe it? Um, of even being able to, or even being allowed to grieve for somebody that you like physically or well, emotionally did not really have a relationship with yet you ultimately do because yeah, well, <laughs> half of my DNA is, is comes from him, you know? So, so that was really the thing of like, Oh, am I even, so it was about guilt and about allowing myself to feel things. So the emotional side of expressing things and, being kind to myself is something that comes back uh, well, very when often. You said allowing yourself to feel things mm -hmm. uh, in general or with regard to your father? Both, but in that specific moment, it was more around uh, regarding to my father of, mm -hmm. of, you know, not going to work and, and being at home and just going through that grieving process. And then, you, and, and, then, and then you mentioned that that was like a pivotal moment for you. Yeah, absolutely. So within... Um, I always knew that I wanted to become a coach from probably when I was 18. I sent a bunch of emails to coaches in the Netherlands. Oh, where do I become a coach? What is coach school? Where do I, where do I go to? And all of them got back. Yeah, go get yourself some, a university degree and, and study and we'll, we'll talk. So when he passed away, that was really realization for me of, hey, life can just end like this. So within a week, I was enrolled in a, a life and um, executive uh, diploma course 
And so, yes, it's, it was like this push for me, this, this, well, let's call it an awakening uh, and a, what word can I use? Kind of like yeah, allowing comes up for, as a word again, but kind of like a permission as if I, as if I got a permission of like, Oh yeah, because this had happened to him. I don't want to, I guess in a way to feel that guilt as well at some other stage of my life. So if I want to do stuff, I need to go do it and nobody else is going to do it for me. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that, that really changed my life because the coaching course was something I'd always wanted to do. Only did it 12 years later. Um, and that kind of got me going on this coaching journey, self-development. Yeah. You, well, you analyze yourself inside out, upside down uh, within, uh, within one of those courses. Mm-hmm. And, um, but it's yeah. interesting though, right? So, so that, that we need those crises. You said like, you know, I knew like I needed to be a coach and since at age 18, but it's yeah. really in the moment of those crises, which yeah. when you're there, you feel helpless and sad. It's like it. Yeah. You're shaken. A wake up call, right? Yeah. A wake up call. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so now you do that. So, so you, you, you started to, to build your clientele, right? Um, and you work already right. with a number of people. Um, so how has that experience shaped uh, how you have your program and, and um, the people that you help? What you know, you finding your target group rather, right? Yeah, perfect. I I wanted to just maybe add one more thing that Absolutely. shaped that journey even more. So uh, I started off with a life and executive coaching diploma, and and within that program, I started coaching people, and after that as well. And then a second pivotal moment kind of happened six months, eight months later, which is when I discovered a, a lump in my breast, which when I had the conversation with the doctor at the time was yeah, a kind of tumor. And that was also like, Oh my God, now I'm going to die basically. So that really pivoted me into an, a, like a deeper layer of, you know, self-exploration. And that's when I, I started exploring all, all kinds of spiritual, you know, all kinds of mo- modalities, past life regressions, God knows what. And that's how I came uh, on the, the, the journey of the Akashic records, which is, one of the main things I work with today, even though it's a combination of everything, um, the, the self-healing process is what has really brought me to this, this closer connection with, with divinity, with, with who we are um, essential or essentially. So how I work with people is basically I do uh, readings for people. That's the first part of, of the program that I, that I offer at the moment. I offer a ton of different readings, but what's on my website right now is uh, called a, a soul empowerment package. So, the first so if I explain, explain to me real quick, so what a reading is, you know, so how, how would I envision that? So a reading would literally be like what we were doing, we are doing right now. It's an online, it can be offline as well, but uh, well, my scope is, is global. It's limitless. So it can be with. Oh, I don't have to there. be with the lens. I can work. No. With it. Okay. no, exactly. So it's kind of, I, w- I would kind of uh, compare it with astrology. You give me a few uh, pieces of information. So in this case, it would be your current name your name at birth, your uh, date of birth, and your place of birth. And that allows me to access something called the Akashic Records. So I'll, I'll briefly explain it so people know what it, what it is. We are physical body, we're vibration, and we're uh, based on the third dimension. Our mind and our emotions are based on the fourth dimension. And on the fifth dimension, and there's, well, 12 or more, on the fifth dimension, that's where the Akashic Records are, are located, which is basically like the World Wide Web of Souls. So it's like a library. So I've been attuned um, to this dimension, just like you would to say Reiki, the Reiki energy or, or some other type of, of modality. So um, I use a pendulum to access that. So, so I have very specific points of entrance, which are the, the, the piece of information that I need from somebody. I access that. I see if the soul is willing to work with me. Some, in some cases it may not be or may not be ready, which has hardly happened to me. So mo- in most cases we're, we're screaming to, well, not in a negative sense, we're, we're very open to being worked with and to, to revealing who we are in essence. And then I have a, a very clear protocol of questions because you need to, it's, it's like Google searches. You can so, search so how, endlessly. So how, how do you do that? So, so, uh, can you do that like on demand or do you need to prepare and you know, you, you need that upfront information, right? So I need that upfront information. Yes. Without that, I cannot access somebody's information. So that's what I need those four pieces of information. And then I do like a, literally like 10 second meditation 
So I go into that uh, dimension so I can, it's like logging onto your computer, basically. Can you do that with me right now? Can I do it with you right now? Yeah. Uh, well, I would, it would probably be better to do that after, like on the sides because I need all of your information, but technically I could, yeah. Technically I could just sit here for a few moments. I don't have my pendulum here with me right now, but yeah, I should have, <laughs> I should, yes, it, it's instant. It's instant. I literally need 10 seconds to get into the mode, get into the zone basically. And then I can ask all the questions that I need to ask. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, and so that's the, the basic of how I would start doing the reading. So I, I don't do it live quite yet in the future. I probably will, but for the moment I prepare it upfront. So I get some of the information and I prepare all the, all the, the, the information that I have available to me that I need or that I can transmit to the person in a dosage that is, you know, um, digestible for the person because I can, well, I can get so much information, but we can only really deal with a certain amount of change, I suppose, to start taking new actions because that's what it's all about. It's what, with, like with any type of coaching or well, whatever type of, of healer or anything, uh, somebody you're working with, it's all action-based. So, okay, so after this call, I just already made a note, like after yeah. the call, I will absolutely contact you, right, again with my information, and we do this again. Right? Exactly, so, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to work with you, of course. I would, I would love, 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 love to. Uh, uh, For sure, yeah, I'd be more than happy to. So, um, well, it's easy, I just send you an email. Right. Yeah, you uh -huh. send me an email. Yeah, you send me an email. Oh, at hello. Anybody at, else contact you? Yeah. So it's hello at ruacoaching.com. Okay. So that's rua r u w a. And put that either you know, wherever you watch this, right, guys? Either there, 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 so somewhere. You also will put it into um, into uh, uh, the comment box, right? So we have. You. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll share this video as well, of course, uh, on mm -hmm. my social media. You can find me on Instagram, Rua Coaching. Um, yeah, just type Ruba Coaching and you'll find me somewhere. Awesome. So I, I, I find you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, so once you've gone through, so, so I give you the information, once you've done all of that, how do you actually help? What do you do? What do we do with, what do I need to prepare for, right? I've been to it. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> something to me that like, you know, I don't know, you were like in your past life, you were an well. or whatever, right? So is that the kind of information that I get? You know? Yeah, that's absolutely the kind of information that you get. So basically the first reading has two parts to it. One part is about who you are. So to give a bit of context, we all, we are incarnated in a human body right now which means that we have a soul. There are, uh, there are souls uh, that are spirit guides, for example, or there, there are souls that are, have chosen a different vehicle of, of being for themselves right now. But everybody that is on earth, uh, we are incarnated and I can access, it's kind of like a, I call it the divine soul blueprint. So it's like a blueprint, you know, of a house. You have your big, your big sheet with all the, the blue, you know, drawings on it, the living room and the, whatever the kitchen. We have that as well uh, to understand who we are essentially. We were all created back, I don't know how many centuries or thousands of years ago, with a different composition. So there's eight divine gifts, for example, and we all have a percentage of, of every single one of them. Though we have primary and sometimes secondary gifts that we can work with. And if we are living exactly in accordance to the gifts that we have, so percentually, it's very scientific, actually. I thought, oh my God, yeah, I'm going to become a psychic. What does that look like? It's very I, I, scientific. I, 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 was going, I was going to say, like a lot, a lot of that has actually been scientifically proven and has yeah. been present in the DNA, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's not just like, you know, out there stuff, no. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose it depends on everybody how open they are to, to learning about this. Um, but yeah, it's... It's honestly the, the, the protocols that I work with or that we work with from a sober lemon perspective, they're very, very strict and it needs to be clear because it's like going on the internet. You can search absolutely anything and you can be lost for a couple of hours. But if you don't ask the right questions, you will not get the information that you need, right? So it, it's, it's about being, being very, very consistent and very, very accurate in what you're trying to find. So, so I can talk to you about that like for a long, long time, right? So we have like one Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, perfect. We, 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 so we, let me, real quick, what is the outcome of, of all of that? So the outcome is on the one hand, an understanding of who you are essentially and how you can be more aligned with that. And the second piece, I go into blocks and restrictions, things, choices that our soul has made in past lives 
and sometimes in our current life that are holding us back. So there are patterns and behaviors that are holding us back from, you know, living a fully financially abundant, healthy, happy life because we've taken that choice and we've, we've kind of pulled it, dragged it forward until today. And we're still, you know, expressing an energy of God knows what, um, timidity. We're, we're being very shy because we had a shy moment there, like, whatever, 10 lifetimes ago, yeah. we're still portraying that behavior. So it's kind of like an energetic cleanse. We're removing all of this, uh, this kind of gunk or stuff or rubbish from our divine soul blueprint. We're clearing that you get a boost of energy. You know more about who you are. And then the consequent, uh, the, the sessions afterwards will define um, actions in that first session already. So you can, we need to change. We need to go outside our comfort zone to, to see a change vibrationally. And then the, the consecutive sessions are going to be about taking more actions to align more and more and more to who we are, because that's where basically, well, probably 95% of the world. I always say I'm not quite an Oprah yet. My, my version of Oprah. I like it. That's that you what said, it is. I like it that you said yet, you know, <laughs> so, yet, of oh. course, yet, because it's all about changing our vibration, changing our energy, being more aligned to who we are. And that's when results come into our lives, you know, automatically. It doesn't need to be hard, but yes, we need to be consistent. We need to take actions outside of our comfort zone because only then are we going to see change. So it's a, it's an awareness and then it's an action plan. I, we do an integration, uh, some integration work as well. So subconsciously, all of the clearing work is, is settled. And then it's about taking action and about, yeah, you know, embracing that new version of you ultimately. Amazing. I do need to work with you. So I, you, you will get Perfect. all the information. Uh, <laughs> Great. Later on. Remind me exactly. Remind me about the four pieces of information that you So need. your current full name, your full name at birth, your place of birth and your date of birth is all that I need. Okay. I will send you that and then I'll schedule Perfect. my session for everybody Excellent. else here on this watching this, right? So you can go to was it, ruaconsulting.com. Rua Coaching ruacoaching.com sorry ruacoaching.com um uh, kim is going to be tagged uh, wherever you watch this here 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 or there facebook is going to be there youtube there you get it right <laughs> and uh i will definitely i will not wait so uh, you okay. should do the same right so contact kim right away um ask for uh, your first session i've heard people uh, using her services and they're extremely happy and I know her business is already full um, not overbooked but getting there right so very close absolutely so, so don't wait do it now and you know always remember as you work with Kim or you go about your own life live matter and stay amazing bye